Uh, hi, everyone, and thank you so much for coming to this talk. My name is Alina, and I'm speaking with <laughs> and I'm speaking with Thomas here today. So thank you all for coming. And we will talk today about revolutionizing Java applications in the cloud with Graal VM. Okay, let's check our setup. Okay, looking good. Thanks, Thomas. So often when we talk about GraalVM at conferences, I assume it looks something like this to you, right? So like a Swiss knife, which is very nice and functional, but there are so many things it can do, it's getting a bit confusing. So what we'll try to do today in this talk is just focus on one thing and just talk specifically about Java in the cloud and native image and how GraalVM can help you make better applications for Java in the cloud. So we will try to focus on that today. And I assume you're all Java developers here because we were at, at DevOps, but just a quick recap of what GraalVM is and what it can do for you as a Java developer. So there is a number of ways how you can execute Java applications on GraalVM. The first one you see here on the left is the JIT mode in which GraalVM acts as your normal JDK distribution and you can run your Java applications as you would normally do on a JVM, just with a different top tier of highly optimizing compiler. And there is this new mode of execution Java applications on GraalVM, which is the native image ahead of time compilation mode. And that will be our focus of the talk today. And in this mode, it's really great to deploy Java applications to the cloud because in the native image mode, applications start much faster, use significantly less memory, and this makes this mode of operation really great for microservices, serverless applications, but basically any kind of applications that you want to run efficiently in the cloud or in other deployment scenarios. And based on that, so because native image is such a great deployment model, a lot of Java microservice frameworks that we all know and love adopted native image as the way of running their Java applications. So if you're using Spring, if you're using Micronaut, if you're using Quarkus and Halidon, all of them are using native image to get those deployment benefits. And to prove that point, we actually have a live photo of all those people from those frameworks teams working together to help us shape the future of native image for the Java ecosystem at our recent meetup for GraalVM community. So we really appreciate this community effort to yes, work together. We, we love all these guys and uh, yes. thank you for your support. Uh, we and hope uh, that they like us back as well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, these are just representatives. There's, of course, teams behind each of these frameworks. And uh, we are very happy that the frameworks are helping us make Gravium and Java in the cloud successful. Yes, so that is the idea for native image and its role in the Java ecosystem. And uh, next, uh, let's talk a bit about Java in the cloud and what could be our goals for running and deploying Java applications to the cloud. So if you're deploying applications to the cloud, probably the first thing you could be uh, focusing on is getting fast startup. Because if you're starting fast, not only it is good for you as a developer and for your users from the user experience perspective, but it also means that your application starts faster and it will use so much less resources to actually get started. So this would be the first benefit that you would be looking at if you want to deploy your application specifically to the cloud. Now, again, for the cloud, Another thing you want to focus on is resources usage because that affects your cloud bill. So if you could have the same Java application doing the same functions but using less memory, less CPU, that would be a preferred model because this way you could save costs on your cloud deployments. That is another benefit. And one more thing about native image that maybe some people don't uh, notice that much, but that's another big benefit that we will talk about in today's talk is minimizing vulnerability. And we will show you also a demo of how you can reduce attack surface of your application using native image. And last but not least, in some environments or for some reasons, you could be also concerned with the packaging size of your application. And this is where native image can also help you out to produce a slim and efficient version of your Java application. So let's talk about each of those. Uh, in detail, and the first thing we want to talk about is the startup of native image applications. And for that, just a quick idea behind the native image build process. So here we are splitting working with a Java application into two steps, the build time and the runtime. And the idea that we have is to move all the heavy extensive operations to the image build time so that when you start your application, every single time it can start significantly faster because you already done all of that extensive work at the image build time. So the way this is happening is that native image will analyze your entire application and will try to find, initialize all the code at the image build time and produce 
this platform-specific native executable that no longer requires a JVM to run, and it also comes with a pre-populated heap so that your application can start faster. So this is behind the screens of the native image build process. And if we compare this to running on a JVM, where this fast startup is coming from is that when you're running your application on a JVM, there is quite a bit of work to be done when you first start your application. So the JVM needs to start loading your classes, verifying, interpreting, which is often very slow, profiling, compiling, and then after all this warm-up work has been done, initially it runs with the best version with the finally optimized code. So on the JVM, you need to do all those steps, while on the native image, since you've done all of this at the image build time, everything you have to do in terms of startup time on native image is just load your executable and <laughs> start running immediately with your best optimized code because all of this has been optimized and compiled at the native image build time. So even if you look at this visually, you can see how fewer steps you need to do if you're running your applications on native image. And uh, enough of the slides. Let's see if we can show you some demo of studying and measuring performance of a native image application. Yeah, I need to drag the window. Good. All right. So yeah. So let's uh, let's show some demo apps. Uh, we choose here uh, one of the frameworks we mentioned, uh, but yeah, as we as we said, we, we like all frameworks. Uh, we choose here the uh, the Micronaut framework because uh, Kramer was uh, kind enough to help us out. Uh, and so we have a simple Micronaut application. And yeah, I mean, apologize, my voice a little bit. I'm a little uh, I have a little cold. Uh, but um, uh, so. Uh, we have here a simple Micronaut application, Hello Devox, you've seen it like a million times, uh, nothing crazy, nothing special. Um, and from, from this kind of uh, application, we can uh, start um, building a native image using, um, using the Maven, um, Maven uh, to, to package this up. Uh, so we do Maven package minus D packaging equals native image. And in, in this way, we create a, a native image out of this application. Um, Looking good. And so we are here on a machine on the Oracle Cloud. And we took the, uh, the smallest available uh, dedicated instance on the Oracle Cloud that is available. And um, yeah, we see the native image output. We have over the last releases uh, put more and more into the native image output because we think that uh, we have a lot of information about the application as we analyze it, and we can uh, use uh, this to give programmers some more hints of what's going on. And um, so here on the output first, you see here that we are running here on the Gradient version 22.2. Uh, it's the last released version. Our next version comes out uh, in, uh, a week. in a week. Yes, in a week, exactly. Um, and uh, we see the Java version, it's based on the Java 17, so it's on the latest LTS of Java. Uh, you also need a C compiler installed with native image for some of the native parts that could be linked with the image. And it shows uh, that it's using the Givon garbage collector, which is also the default garbage collector on hotspot. Uh, this is something but that can be configured when, when using a native image to use the exact same garbage collector as is the default on hotspot. Uh, we see it's using Netty here. Uh, we see a couple of Netty features here are registered. Uh, and despite the fact that this is a small sample application, uh, it's, it says it's uh, 15,000 classes that go into this application and about 115,000 methods that were considered reachable uh, for this application. And it, it then has to compile those, those ahead of time. And um, it's uh, finished on this server. It's finished in one minute, uh, 30 seconds. Uh, and you see as part of the image build process, you, you see things about what, what ended up in the image, what are the biggest contributors to the image size uh, and how big the image is in total. And uh, as you can see, one, one minute, 30 seconds, it's a beefy machine here, but it's not the, not the most crazy one out there. Um, and you can see we did a lot of improvements on build times of native images over the last uh, releases, and we're happy to see that it's now getting into the one minute, two minute, three minute range on a decent machine in the cloud, uh, which, which should be maybe acceptable. But so one thing to consider, of course, is 
we need in this time, it's not just the analysis that takes a lot of time, it's also that you really need to compile these 115,000 methods upfront, and otherwise this work would be done when you start the application. So otherwise this work is done whenever you start an application, and most applications uh, are started more often than they are built, so in this case it's then a win to move this, this work to the to build process. Now the question is, a uh, startup is good, and how do we match a startup? And the frameworks, they have something that they, 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 are, um, they are like uh, uh, sp specifying the startup time uh, and, and saying how many milliseconds it takes to, to start up. So we can here see um, Maven, um, I think this should work, might cannot run. And yeah, and then it says like startup complete in 700 milliseconds. But um, I wouldn't always trust what is always displayed here because the frameworks might uh, might have an incentive to produce a smaller number and display it on the screen, right? Uh, there was also some people on, on the internet measuring uh, something with MX Bean, which is not actually the startup, but it's the time after startup. So, so we, we want to really do this uh, in a more, you know, like proper outside way. And for this, I have a little shell script here that is using perf to start the, the program. And it's then curling until the first successful request is served by the application. And afterwards, it's, it's killing the application and gets the result from perf. Uh, so for this, first, I, I, here's, I, I, I uh, use here the JIT mode of Gralium. So this is running Gralium JIT mode on hotspot with the Gralium Enterprise Edition compiler. And I can run this start script here. It's starting Micronaut, and it's, it's uh, already done here, and it's getting down again. Um, here, yeah, Micronaut said the startup is completed in 900 milliseconds, but they also need to serve the first request, right? Uh, so the total time elapsed here is 1.5 seconds. And we see here, uh, also an important point is, it's not just the time, the workload time that's important. Important on the cloud specifically is also the total CPU time the app uses because uh, typically you want to just uh, have full load on your computer. So what's relevant is the CPU time. And here we see about six seconds of CPU time is used for starting the Hello World Micronaut application uh, on the JVM with CrawlJIT and serving one request. Okay. Uh, then we can here um, uh, set now a switch to the EOT mode. And on the EOT mode, we can start as well again. Uh, now here it says about 83 milliseconds startup, uh, this is Micronaut here. Uh, total here to serve the request was 182 milliseconds. Uh, so it's, it's of course substantially faster, that's not a, not a surprise, uh, as, as Alina explained on, on the slide. And, uh, but also important is the user time used by the application is, is much, much smaller, right? So meaning like the, the total CPU used to serve this one request is even, even lower than the time measurement that you see sometimes the app starts up fast. Okay, so um, now this is, this is on the startup. Now what, a, what if we not only consider startup, we consider startup and memory footprint, and we also consider specifically that the app runs at least for a little while. It's not just one request, it's a, it's a few requests. And for this, I have a second a script here. Uh, this script is using PS Record, which is a nice tool that is allowing you to record the CPU usage and memory of an application over time. And uh, it creates a plot that you will later see. And uh, we again have the same script. We ask until uh, we, we wait until the the, um, the server is ready. And when the server is ready, I give it uh, 20 uh, 20 um, elements that it should query and uh, it queries the elements or the, the requests in, in uh, 500 milliseconds intervals. So let's go again to source uh, to the GVM version of this. Uh, we run the record. Uh, so this is now simulating the load. It's a very light load, but it's, it's, it's not, yeah, it's, it's basically giving 20 requests to the application. And uh, yeah, so the total CPU time actually is almost the same as if you give just one request because the, the application is, is it's a little bit higher. It's, it's from, yeah, 6.1 six, six seconds here. Um, and now if you look at the plot here, uh, this is the plot for PS record. The red lines is the CPU usage. And you can see in the GVM mode of GraalVM, uh, you see 
like at the beginning, a huge spike of, uh, we use here 12 cores simultaneously to warm up the application because the cheat compiler has to like, uh, tries to get going and, and do all this work that you otherwise see in your image build, right? And then later on, we see these 20 requests and uh, you see there's always a little spike when the request comes, but nothing out of the ordinary. Total memory usage here is at 250 um, megabytes. I give it just uh, the standard configuration for memory. There is there's no, uh, there no changes made on the, on the memory uh, configuration for the garbage collector. And then um, we can now run the same app here in um, source set native. This is now running the same load in the in the GVM setup, and we record this again. Uh, sorry, this is running Thank the you. same in the native setup. Thank you. Yeah. And um, it's running again the same load in the same in the same frequency. It's some constant load. And we see here again the total CPU time to serve is very low. It's only 0 0.28 seconds to serve these requests. So the total amount of CPU time the application used in these 10 seconds is very low. And if we now look at the graph here, we see here that you almost, there is no spike at the beginning of CPU usage. Uh, you, you, you have much smaller spikes in general because during the spikes there is no, uh, there is no cheat compilation happening and the total memory usage in a default configuration here is uh, about half the memory. Before it was 250 megabytes, now it's 120 megabytes. Uh, on memory consumption, yeah, the numbers can differ depending on how you configure a garbage collector, but there are substantial elements uh, in, in the cheat mode we need to keep in memory that we do not need to keep in memory in the ahead of time compiled mode. I will later have a slide for this. Now, one thing people say often about the cheat mode is that, yeah, you know, it starts fast, maybe it uses less memory, but uh, yeah, so the peak performance is bad, right? So now, in order to check this out, um, let's try a, a, a more like a, a load test. Let's say my, our application really uh, takes a lot of requests in. And for this, uh, I again, uh, first I, I start with the JVM, where I now go to um, the chip jar with Micronaut here again. I start this in another, in the background. Okay, so this is running. Now I use the Hey Load Balancer, and I, I give it a million requests. And um, based on this uh, million requests, I, I just see here, yeah, localhost 8080, and then slash hello. So this is now running quite some load on the system. Um, it's a million requests. Uh, let's see how many seconds it's gonna take. Okay, so it's about uh, here, it finished in, this is uh, cheat mode with Graalium EE cheat on hotspot. This is 104,000 requests per second. Uh, so it took about 9.6 seconds to serve these requests. And then we see here, this is running G1, GC, our latency, our, our T latency distribution is here. And 99% uh, latency is, is, is at 18 milliseconds. Oh, well, no, that's 1.8 1, 1 milliseconds. Okay, so now we are, uh, we need to kill the process. Yep. Okay, good. And then I will run here um, the native image version, uh, which we compiled just before. And now I run the same hey command. I give it again a million requests. It's a native image, it runs a million requests on this server. Okay, so it's finished. Uh, this was a million requests on this app. Uh, this is 9.4 seconds total. Uh, requests per second is here slightly higher. Uh, 106,000 uh, requests per second. You see, you can look at the histogram, the T latencies, etc. cetera. Um, it's actually a little bit better here. We were at 18 here, it's 14. Uh, so in this scenario here, if you uh, run here the Graalium AOT, uh, EOT mode with Graalium EE versus the Graalium JIT EE mode, EOT wins also on throughput. It doesn't always mean on throughput, uh, but 
it's certainly the case that we are getting closer and closer where EOT is starting to also take over the JIT uh, approach in throughput. And this is what uh, the Guardian team has been focusing on now for um, many months, like maybe a year or two already. And uh, finally, we see the, the results going in here uh, where we see uh, EOT uh, getting also in throughput better than JIT. Awesome, thank you, Thomas. So maybe I think I can just sit if you can give mm -hmm. the motion closer okay. to me. Okay, so here we talked about startup time and performance of native image, and let's talk about the second benefit that we want to achieve for our applications in the cloud, and that is resources usage. So we showed that in a demo a bit, just to quickly reiterate on what are the resource usage benefits that you can get in the cloud. In, in terms of memory, what is happening when you are running your native image application versus running on a JVM, so what we showed to you as a demo, but just to once again explain what is happening there. So when you're running on a JVM, there are some things that you are sharing across your VM instances, but also for some things, you would need to duplicate memory per process. So dynamic code cache, profile information, all those kind of things, as you add more instances of your application, you would need to also have more memory for all those things. And as you scale, you would need to add more and more memory. While for native image, you can share between the instances of the application, the actual application machine code and runtime components for it. And then what you need to just additional memory for as you add more instances of the native executable is just the application payload. So as you scale your application, you need to add way less memory for new additional instances if you are running on native image. And in terms of scalability, yeah, this is what's happening. So as you're running on a JIT, you need to add more and more memory, while for native image, you add memory, but only for the application payload. And that is what we saw in our demo when the memory that we were using was growing a bit over time, but not significantly. And to illustrate that point on a particular example, here we are looking at a Apache Tika application that we are scaling on a JVM and on native image by adding more instances. And we can see that we are when we are running on a JVM and we add more instances, memory that we need to allocate adds quite significantly. So that is our yellow bars, right? That is running on the JVM. When we run on native image, memory increases, but not as much because things like image heap and machine code can be used between those processes. So that was quickly about the memory usage. And let's talk about another interesting aspect of native image, and that is minimizing vulnerabilities of your application. So when we were talking about native image build process, what happens is when native image compiles your application, it is happening under closed world assumption, and it is happening ahead of time. So when you actually execute your application, there is no dynamic unknown code execution when you run the application. No new code can be loaded, no new code can be run. Everything that is in the application needs to be known at the image build time. And that is one of the ways how native image can be a safer model of running your applications. Now, Another thing that native image does, it will only include code that is necessary for your application to run in this final produced native executable. So if there is some code your application is not actually using, like some part of dependency or any other part of, let's say, JDK that your application is not using, it will not be included in this final image, and that is how it is so small. So only the parts that of, of the code that actually used will end up in the produced native executable. Also, some things like, for example, reflection are disabled by default in native image, and they cannot be en they can be enabled, but that requires providing you a very specific, explicit configuration from your side. And the same applies to deserialization. So that needs to be a specified list of classes that have such functionality. And last but not least, also some of other attack surfaces, such as, for example, from the JIT compilation side, are also not, a, not possible when running on native image because it is ahead of time compiled beforehand. And for that, I believe, Thomas, we have another demo. Yes, so for this, I created a different Micronaut application. Uh, I call it unsafe demos, so don't repeat at home. Don't upload and to GitHub. <laughs> yeah, I don't upload to GitHub. We're not uploading this to GitHub, otherwise GitHub Copilot might get right. the wrong ideas. Um, yeah, I don't want to do that. So um, 
So in, you know, so this is a Micronaut application that uses a feature from, from Micronaut. Many frameworks have this where it, it is, it is actually, it is serving, oops, um, it is serving, yeah, no, 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 no. For the demo, we need to <laughs> pretend I'm only looking at the top of the file here. And so, so it is serving a static, static content. It's serving static content. Many of these applications serving static content. And um, let me just here on the unsaved. Yeah, so, so now I go out of the simple demo. I go to the unsaved demo, okay. Now I run this unsaved demo again, just with uh, just a micronaut run command. Oh. It's not as expected. Yeah, I, I didn't kill, I didn't clean up. I need to kill my last demo. Okay. Um, good. So we, we, we run this micronaut up. And it has this, yeah, it has the mapping static and then it can serve some files. Um, you can actually, I think this should even work for you if you have the IP address from this. Let's see here. Yeah, you can actually you can actually do this. Help us test it. Yeah, you can actually you can actually go with this. So yeah, so this is this is our surface static content from Micronaut. If you oh, but why is this not updated? It's not supposed to be. It's just the IP address, right? Okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe let's just do it locally. Let's just not expose our <laughs> setup here. Um, so I curl uh, localhost 8080, and I curl here static and hello.html. Okay, good. So okay, okay, that's that's for sure now what we wanted. So we, we get hello devox again. That's great. So now, and and if I if I call something else right, then then I get like yeah, I get nothing. Message not found. Whatever. So now, now, now comes a new programmer to the team, and he adds a piece of code to the Micronaut application, which he found on Stack Overflow. <laughs> and, and um, yeah, he, he looked up how to how to serve resources, right? Because because he should program a new way how to get these uh, static resources. And he found on Stack Overflow that in order to get static resources, you need to use get resource as get class, get class loader, get resource as stream, right? And uh, he he creates this new function here with the slash get, uh, which is a Micronaut controller, very idiomatic. Um, it has a query value name. It is it is taking the name. It's adding the static because it's, we want to serve the static folder, right? So we, we put the static folder as a prefix here to the name, and then we get the input stream and we return it. Right? And because we are good programmers, we also write tests for this, of course, right? So we write a test, or we, or we check out if this works, right? So we curl now again, and now we curl here localhost 8080 slash get question mark name equals hello.html. Okay, and it serves it serves my my devox thing, right? Uh, I if I if I give it something else, it serves nothing. So I'm satisfied. My tests are working. I deploy, right? So so now the the, the problem, of course, is. Um, yeah, there is there's a small security issue with this. Um, because I can now in name say something like dot dot slash application dot yaml. And it will reveal everything, right? So so that's yeah, so so here we have here we have the big secret. So 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 obviously the code is unsafe because because the user's input was not uh, sanitized. And uh, so, so therefore, it creates uh, creates uh, the problem. And by the way, it not only repeat, repeat, uh, like uh, reveals our uh, application uh, database uh, passwords, it also can reveal code because for this we need to say dot dot slash. Uh, is this? Um, let me let me double check what's the package. what's the package example micronaut yeah example micronaut and that's a hello controller. Class, and it will actually give me the binary. I can now put the binary output here for curl, and it will will give me the code of the application, right? So, so this is how easy it is to uh, like make a mistake uh, when you write a Java application for the cloud, and when you write a microservice, um, and and so 
so yeah, so, so this is a scenario, and we, we show this example, first of all, as a, yeah, you should be, yeah, it's generally useful, I think, to understand that, that some of this can be problematic, but, but also, this is a scenario where, in this specific instance, the native image closed world uh, that, that cuts down on reflection and cuts down on arbitrary access is not a bug, but a feature, uh, because in this specific instance, it is, it is, uh, it is now actually uh, helping us resolve this vulnerability. Because if I now close this server here, and uh, I need to, yeah it's, like, yeah, it's killed. And now I've prepared this native image here before. I run this native image application. So it's the same application, just that built a native image out of it. And if I now go to here, right, we can, we can again test it. We can say, okay, does it serve my hello? Yes, it serves my hello. Uh, does it serve my hello in the new way? Um, also does that, right? Uh, but then if I ask this native image app for the uh, application YAML, it serves nothing. And, and the reason is because, because the other elements were registered by the Micronaut framework for native image to be part of the world that ends up in the image, and the other parts were not. So something that is not registered, is not available, and therefore it's not accessible. Uh, same thing is for the, for the Java classes are also not uh, accessible in the same form because they're not registered. Because when you build the native image, you register everything that's accessible for reflection, uh, but also for resources that are accessible. Um, and in this way, it prevents, it, it doesn't prevent all vulnerabilities or anything, but like it is reducing the potential attack surface by only packaging in your app what is required for your app, and then therefore certain certain attacks are made harder or impossible. Good, thank you, Thomas. And we talked about uh, security in native image, and just to back up that statement with more, one more use case. So this is coming from uh, one of our teams at Oracle who are using also GraalVM native image and Halidon as their framework internally. And the reason they chose GraalVM and Halidon for this use case is because they see that their container images are so much smaller with GraalVM. We will talk about that in a second. But also they are saying basically the same thing, that for them, compiling with native image is a killer feature for security. So that's a good example, and I think we'll share the slides afterwards so you can read about that more as well. And let's talk about the last thing we wanted to talk with you about, the last benefit that we want to accomplish for our cloud deployments, and that is the packaging size. So the way native image works, as we said, right, so only the code that you actually need in your file will be included in a native executable, and the code that you're not actually using will be eliminated to make this packaging size as small as possible. And you could argue that maybe the advantage of this, it, this is that you cannot share Java runtime installation between different instances, but also there is another way to look at it, and that is that you can update or patch your applications individually if necessary. And uh, just a few more words about packaging. Uh, we had another session about this yesterday, so you cannot watch it live, but you can watch a recording. So to learn more about packaging, and specifically for for cloud deployments, please go and look up this session on the Voxus YouTube from Sean Smith from our product management team. But basically the idea that we want to show here is that you can get really small, tiny container images if you're using native image. So here if you're looking at deploying your application using a normal JDK image, you can see how your image size could be around, let's say, 300 to 100 megabytes while on native image, you can get to as low as five megabytes for a Hello World application, especially if you would compress it. So uh, that is another talk we had. Please look at that if you're interested in this and if you have more questions about packaging your native image applications. So this is all looking good so far, I assume, but I can see that question, so what's the catch? This is maybe looking too good, so what are the things that you should be aware of if you want to use native image for your applications? And there are a few things. One thing I want to talk about is reflection. So how many of you have heard this statement that GraalVM doesn't support reflection? Can you raise hands? 
Okay, some people in the room, including our colleagues, have heard such thing that GraalVM doesn't support reflection. Uh, that is not true. GraalVM does support reflection, and the same applies also specifically to native image. So you can use reflection if you are using native image for your applications, but there are a few things to be aware of. So one is native image will try to detect those reflective calls in your application when it builds the application, and it will try to resolve this automatically and figure out everything necessary to build your application. But in some cases, this analysis could not resolve your reflective calls automatically, and in that case, you would need to provide configuration to help native image figure out this on its own. Because reflection is a more kind of dynamic Java feature, and building your application ahead of time could be challenging to resolve this automatically. So it could be the case that you would need to provide configuration for native image to help out with things like reflection, but the good news is that there are multiple ways to handle such configuration. One is you can build such configuration files yourself manually, but that's probably not ideal, and there are a few more ways how you can do it. One is you can use our tracing agent that comes with native image to run and observe your application behavior on the JVM, produce those configuration files automatically for you, and then those will be picked up by native image automatically when it builds your application. So that's one way to do it. I do have to say that tracing agent helps a lot, but please also double check that the files are complete. Do not rely on it 100% hoping that it will resolve everything on its own. So it helps, but also please make sure that those configuration files are complete. Another way to handle reflection for native image is that if you're using one of those frameworks that we mentioned that are working with native image, so Spring Boot, Micronaut, Held, and Quarkus, they will help you with reflection configuration from the framework side. And last but not least, a few months ago, we announced this GraalVM reachability metadata project and repository on GitHub which is coming from our team, and that's a centralized place to share, contribute, and reuse metadata for different external libraries for native image. And uh, this is a place from which native image can pull metadata info for your libraries when you're building your project. So it's the project that we are doing together with all those framework teams and community members, and right now we see contributions from many third-party libraries that you can use in your native image applications, and the way to benefit from this project is that if you are using our native build tools, so Maven, uh, Maven and Gradle plugins, it's just a matter of enabling this configuration, giving access to the repo, and this configuration for your application will be picked up automatically by native image. So this project is still a work in progress, but for many and many libraries, there is already config available that native image can pick up as it is building your application. And uh, talking about other things to be aware of when you are building your native image application, so required build step, right? So we are moving all those extensive operations to the image build time. This means that you would need some computational effort as you are building your application. That is one thing to be aware of. And also you would need a good machine, especially if you're building a bigger application with the same target architecture and operating system that you would need to produce your binary for. Uh, one of the ways to tackle those could be using our Grow VM GitHub Action. So if you're using GitHub Action workflows, that will help you significantly to set up and start using Grow VM for your workflows. And one thing the more that we want to recommend to you is develop your application on a JVM so you can get faster feedback in your development cycle and use native image and compile to native image as more or less a final step in your development process. You don't have to do this on every single minor change, especially if you're, let's say, business logic. And for the best throughput, uh, what you can achieve, and super quickly about this, so since we are compiling native image applications ahead of time, there is no access to this profile information that makes the JVM so powerful in terms of peak throughput. But there is a way to tackle this, and that is with profile guide optimizations. So one thing you can do if you, can do if you want to accomplish the best possible peak throughput for your native image applications, in addition to startup and memory usage, is that you can collect profile information uh, by using PGO instrument from GraalVM native image, and then you can run your application with relevant workloads to collect this profile information and pick up those profiles when you're building your app so that native image will compile it for the best peak throughput, having this profile information available. And then you will execute your application as you would normally do. 
Okay, and a few things about what's new in Grow VM. So one of the things we are really excited about is that now we have Grow VM JDK 19 builds available as developer builds, which you can get from our GitHub repo, but also I believe this will be available with our next 22.3 release. So we are super excited about this, and uh, one of the things that we are particularly excited about in this release is virtual threads, and we want to show you a demo of using virtual threads on Grow VM and on Jet and in native image mode. All right, yeah, so <coughs> we, like on Gravium, we, we decided that, uh, yeah, so we are very excited about Loom in general, uh, and, and, and we are happy to, um, to work and have received also a lot of support from, from, from the Loom team, who is making sure that uh, Gravium works well with Loom. Uh, Ron, Ron Presley is at the conference, by the way, if you wanna, if you wanna speak to him. And um, we are here, um, now, uh, we have a small demo app for Loom, where Loom runs on native image. Uh, for this, I switch to this console again, I clear, and I go here to virtual threads demo. And um, I'll just quickly show here running this demo uh, on, on the JVM. It's running, it's running on Gravium Cheat, uh, with, with Gravium Cheat Compiler. And yeah, it's... It's a Game of Life app. It's a Game of Life app. It's, it starts with threads, and, and then, then it, it kind of um, stops, them, stops them again. And then we can run the same demo here with... Um, uh, this is running uh, the native image with the, same, with the same parameters. So I can run native to this age. And what you can see is the, the ticks per second here on native image, they are instant. They are instant there. The total user time on native image is spent on the app is only 26 seconds. Like both do the same thing. Both apps starting like, uh, I think it's 50,000 threads uh, doing the game of life and, and, and putting it back. Uh, and uh, in this case, we use uh, only 26 seconds user time. If you run the GVM again, uh, you see it takes some time until it reaches yeah, it reaches in the end the same peak performance, but it, it takes some time. And the user time taken here is, is 54 seconds only. So, so in, in native image mode, yeah, maybe we should have made the demo longer because it's almost too fast to complete. But this is, yeah, so this is, this is starting to, yeah, on 20,000 channels, that's the game of life um, with, with uh, virtual threads uh, from Project Loom. And one other small thing uh, we wanted to show, and I, I'll do it right now here, is uh, we can um, we can also for native image we have a way to um, to get now heap times from native image. So so we are because one issue with native image is often that well some of the Java monitoring or or, or debugging tools are not not yet uh, fully fully available for native image. But so for for the for the heap dumping side of things, uh, one can um, one can uh, create a native image with um, a flag to, uh, to allow VM inspection. So it's minus H, allow VM inspection is what one needs to include for the native image. Uh, the other thing one can do to a native image is, and this is security related again, one can include an S-bomb in a certain format, here's Cyclone DX. And so I, I created such a native image uh, before, and one can now, for example, uh, run this native image. This is the uh, Micronaut Guide inspect, and I can run this with minus xx, um, dump, heap, and exit, I believe. Yes, so it, 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 this is like actually interesting to see what ends up in the image heap. So if you wanna know what your application, what's the heap your application starts with, uh, you can build with this allow inspect your image, and then you can uh, run your image with dump and exit, and now we get a Java H profile with the exact contents of the image heap when the application starts. And this kind of file can be opened, for example, in Visual VM, which is also part of uh, the Gradium distribution. You can install it. And uh, here we can then, uh, we can load a file, and we can load uh, one of these heap dumps here. This is an SVM heap dump. 
and you can actually in this heap thumb look at it like 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 your regular Java heap thumb, and you can look at the strings and and just go and see which Java strings end up in your uh, native image when you start it. So this is this is quite interesting. If you if you're if you want to see what your application like starts with, now the the one thing you can do as well is you can run your application and then ask the application to do a heap thump. And uh, for this, what you need to do is uh, you need to uh, uh, send a signal to the application because the application itself doesn't start another server because you don't want the overhead of that. So you you send a SIGUSR1 uh, signal to the process and then it will actually heap thump. So, so these are two things how uh, with uh, with native image, you can here um, get get now a Java heap time part of your native image. The the final thing I'd like to show here is you can also um, inspect now your image. Uh, so there is a native image inspect file here, and with this I can say target and then I say my cloud guide. Uh, this is my native image, and this will this will get you actually contents of the native image. It will get you like a, a JSON file with all the elements in the image. If you want to look up what ended up in the image and what not. But apart from that, I can also do minus minus s bomb, and this then only gives me the s bomb of the image. So so here I have now the SBOM, which is software bill of materials uh, of the image, which says which libraries ended up in the image. And then I can pipe this SBOM into a, uh, into uh, like vulnerability scanners. So, so I, can, I can actually then like get this, um, like a list of vulnerabilities that could happen based on the soft bill of materials in my image. So this is uh, another security related feature where you, you can then check what actually ended up in the image that's deployed and then run that against the vulnerability scanner because this is a standard format that's uh, compatible with many, both commercial and there's also an open source uh, vulnerability scanner that uh, understands that format. Thank you, Thomas. And a few more things. So we mentioned monitoring, but just to talk a few more things about that we have here there. So we have support for JFR for native image applications that is still work in progress, but some of the events such as custom events and system level events are already available. So that is work in progress and with every release, we release and extend more and more of this support. Uh, another thing is that, yes, we did the heap dumping of native image already. And in terms of monitoring, another thing we have, so uh, we are working uh, with the community <coughs> contributions on adding JMX support in native image as well. And in other cool things that are coming for Graal VM and the Graal Web community, so this was recently released by the IntelliJ IDEA team in their early preview builds. You can already debug native image applications right in your IntelliJ. You can already give it a shot. And in other things we wanted to mention with you, we also have this great public community roadmap on GitHub. So if you want to learn more what is coming in our next releases, what we are working on, uh, just go to our GitHub and you can access this roadmap and see how we are working on the features and when approximately they will be delivered. Uh, another thing about GraalVM, it's also an open source project. Our development is happening on GitHub, so if you're curious, go ahead and give it a try. As a Java developer, it's really interesting to see how it's being developed. Uh, that's so just to recap, so what GraalVM can do for you and your Java applications in the cloud, it, it can get your applications to start really fast, use significant parallelized resources such as CPU and memory, minimize vulnerability, and also give you really compact packaging for your applications. So to get started with GraalVM, if you want to try it, you can just go to our website, which is graalvm.org. That is where you get downloads, docs, all kinds of resources, or you can also use it on Oracle Cloud. And in terms of getting started with GraalVM, uh, I wanted to add one more thing. So if you're using this Davox mobile app, I believe it's using Glow on Mobile and GraalVM under the hood. 
So you probably already have kind of experience using Graal VM even without knowing about it. So that is all we had. You have on to right. add something? Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, attending our session here. And for You're almost on time. One minute left. Yeah, one minute <laughs> left. Uh, thanks for attending the session here. And uh, yeah, like if you have any kind of feedback, uh, you can use the, the session comments for anonymous feedback. You can reach us on, on Twitter, on Slack. You can talk to us here. Uh, you can talk to us here in person also for non-anonymous feedback, yes. Uh, and. Um, yeah, I will, I will wear a mask if you like, <laughs> uh, but I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm negative tested, I'm not. Uh, but but uh, so, the, the other thing is, in general, yes, we rely on the, Gra on the Java community to give us feedback to Gravium. Uh, we, we really see this as an effort that's, yeah, we, we built here some compiler technology, but in order for this to really be applicable and really make a big difference for Java, we need, we need help from the community, we need uh, help from framework providers, uh, we need, because we want to make Java the best language for the cloud. Uh, we want to make sure that Java applications run with the lowest memory possible, best startup, uh, and best throughput uh, in the cloud. And in order to achieve that, yeah, we rely on the Java community. And we're very thankful so far for all the support we received. And um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you also, Alina, for presenting with me here. Nice. And uh, yeah, thank you for attending. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.